Tell you what, the band has started before the podcast has even began here, ladies and gentlemen. But welcome back to another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. First off, just to talk about the Jason Marley episode. One of the greatest amateur boxers in Australian history. He's also now turned pro 3-0. Got a crazy story of almost going to Olympics but not getting there. So he's got a big chip in his shoulder. Was Devin Haney's main sparring partner before the Cambosis fight. So go back and check that one out if you haven't. Um, if you're new here, please give us a like and subscribe if you come back again. We love you. Now, I've been chasing these boys for a while. One of the men was a bit down in the dumps with an injury, but we finally got him on. But, mate, really happy to have uh, Scott Galloway and Marco Tilio on the show. Welcome, boys. That's good to be here, man, finally. Yeah, some old friends, new faces. Yeah, thanks, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's been going on? You've had a pretty big few weeks, man. I was just saying before, like, it feels like you've almost played a season before the A-League started. Yeah, long pre-season, then going away with national team and pre-season camp with the team. It's, yes, been pretty hectic. How, how many years have you been in the A-League now? Three, four? Because you came, you played young in the Champions League in Sydney, but yeah, so that was about four years ago. So four, I think three. Years so you done. used to the long pre seasons now? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, like, like the vet over T- here. Man, he's nearly got more titles and seasons he's played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, joke. that's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know actually what I was looking at? Um, because obviously I do my research here, ladies and gents, as we know. But I was looking at his young Socceroos record, bro. This guy was like Erling Haaland for the so- uh, young Socceroos, like yeah. thirteen games, twelve goals. Yeah, I lost it from there. I don't know. Yeah, I was like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I've got like eighteen and four. And I was like, I thought that was good. He's 30 fucking more, more goals per game. It was yeah. against like Cambodia or something. Yeah, though, probably. Like. Team or less. <laughs> nah, I don't remember. Oh, fuck, man. Well, how you been, Scotty? How's the body and mind, yeah. man, after a big preseason? Yeah, good, man. Coming back, like lengthy injury, like a, you know, rupture in the ligaments in my ankle and that. But, you know, it's looking positive, looking a couple of weeks ahead, so... Have yeah. you ever been injured in a preseason before? Oh man, plenty of times. Oh, you have many times. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you're. A, yeah. I thought I thought you were like a fitness king. I call Jason Gary like the guy who's never injured. He's injured now, but yeah, yeah, no, no, fit, fitness is never an issue. But like, just always like those like little niggles, man. Like, uh, did my calf one year. Just came back a bit. A bit too strong, man. Yeah, <laughs> hit, hit, hit the weights a bit in the off season. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bro, I, I, I came back like five kilos, like heavier, but I was like walking through doors like Arnie. Jesus, but, yeah. well, this last season or this year? It was like uh, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. So that, that was like a bit of a downer. And then uh, last year I had a hammy towards the end of the season, um, sort of like put me up for for Asia and stuff. But yeah, it's like touch wood if I can keep it just like that one one a year. <laughs> yeah, man. This you, my you, one. you continue to amaze me because you've played in the league for so long, yet you still have this baby face. And I'm like, <laughs> it feels like he's a fresh player every year. And I'm like, bro, this guy was – I was speaking to Jason Gary the other day. We're talking about like 2012. And he's like yeah, mentioning your name. Year. And I'm like, bro, what? It's, got, it's 10 years ago. Yeah, bro. That was my, this, I think my 10th year. Yeah, but it yeah. has to be. Yeah, yeah that, that was my first season. Like, far, then. How old were you then? <laughs> <laughs> how long ago? 10 years ago. 10 years. You've been 11. You've been 11. An old man, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's been 11, 11, bro. Yeah, only yeah. yeah. 11. Yeah, I, I started, I, bro, I started 17. I'm 27. And you've still probably yeah. scored more goals than you. No, I'm just, <laughs> but I just got bangers, man. That's yeah, it. you do actually. You do that. left foot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a that's I'm, the one that's injured now. That's so I don't know how that will oh, be. Oh god, that's gonna be. Well, I want to talk about this season because there's so much expectation on you guys. Obviously, you won the championship a couple of years ago, but like. The team on paper, everyone just looks at and it's like, fuck, you know, like what a team and it's always a scary opposition. But internally, like what is the expectation for you guys coming into the season? Tills, I'll go with you first. I'm obviously, yeah, at our club, we have a high standard. So um, yeah, if you look at our roster, we have quite a few good players. So um, yeah, we're looking, I guess, to go back to back with the grand finals. We're well, not back to back anymore, actually. But yeah. To but- go b- get back in the grand final and win the premiership again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see where we, how we go. Um, it's been a long preseason, so we just can't wait to get started. Yeah, I bet. What about you, Scotty? Yeah, man. Oh, it's just the the stature of the club. Like they they just obviously yeah, Man City being our owners, we want to be the Man City of the league. Like mm. uh, was it? We've done three three grand finals on the trot now, four and three years, including the cup. Um, you know, but the downfalls are only one one. So uh, you know, we want to keep that going while improving it. Uh, you know, win the premiers again go three times in a row and then uh you know that will set us up for asia again next season because there's yeah there's no asia this year yeah yeah just want to go back to last season because you guys had a stellar season and obviously western i felt like they had a pretty good season too the whole home and away like they were the benchmark they were coming first but finals is always a bit tricky like you never know it's sort of the team on the day and so forth particularly with what you saw with victory they had like 16 unbeaten games and then one bad game in the second leg and they lost but for you boys what was that like sort of going all the way even though you'd won it and you had the momentum with the the team and the squad from the year before to to not get that one did that hurt 
I guess, man, it's just that's just finals football. Like it's it's just different. You have an off day, that's it. It cost you. Like uh, they had a different format last year where it was like uh, like a two legged semi final. So why did home they do away. that? Is that weird? Is that, uh, is that uh, good for you guys as players? I think I that, think it's just like a bit of like just like theater. adding a bit more money, yeah, a bit more theater, and that to the league. Like I don't think it's. Like we came first and we were playing our away semi final. Yeah, that doesn't you know make I mean? sense doesn't to make me. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so as because like, I said, even like for victory's sake, when like they won the first leg one nil, yeah. and then That's the second leg, the second leg cost yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's like you know, if you didn't have that format, you'd probably be in the final. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. So it's yeah, it's a, it was a, a different one to like take because you know obviously A League men's never had that. So yeah, but then yeah, it's, yeah, obviously we just didn't you know turn up to our best on the on the grand final day. Yeah, um, you know. Western got it, and, you know. Then now that just sort of boils under the skin now, and you know you use it for this year. I didn't even think of that. It's probably like the probably one of the worst things that could happen to the league. You guys losing that because you're only going to get stronger, and now you've got like more fire in your belly to play for. Because if you had a one back to back, you might be like, oh, we're, we're good, like we're invincible. No, nah, they kind of drive it at this. <laughs> they they kind of drive it at this maybe club, that's man. Like, like, that's maybe that's why I'm sitting over here and not playing pro anymore. <laughs> that's <laughs> my brain. Like. Nah, P, PK kind of drives it, man. Like. That's it. Once it's done, celebrate it, leave it, we go again really? sort of thing. Like, and it's always been like that, even during the season. Like, even the year we did win it, and, you know, we we smacked victory in the in the derbies, 6-0, nil, 7-0. Nil. Mm. And he didn't even celebrate. Like, really? He was like, it's a win. Doesn't matter if it's 1-0, nil, 6-0. Nil. We're all celebrating. It's gone big, but, you know, <laughs> he, he, the big he was like, it, it goes in the end, it means nothing if you don't win the league. Like, What's, so. he, what's he like as a coach? Because he obviously had success pretty, sh- like, Instantly, when he came in as a head coach, he picked up a great squad, and I think Mombarts as the coach before. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Obviously, some of the foundations were, were kind of laid through him. Particularly, Jamie said like spoke really highly of him. Um, but what's he like? Um, I guess from a sort of a tactical sense, and then also I find in his role it's one of the hardest because you've got a lot of top players, particularly yeah. in the forward line, the forward aspect, and like to manage them all the game time and make sure everyone's happy is like yeah. a manager. It's not easy. Yeah, uh, it's tough uh, for him, especially. But yeah, he's. Such a tough guy to, I guess, impress almost. Um, yeah. he's always about performance and stuff like that, so he's always judging us. So, like, he's talking going back to seven nil victories, he didn't care that we won seven nil, he just looked back at the video and wanted him to see how the performance was. Really, you think it'd be a five star performance winning seven nil or six nil, but it was nothing like that. There's always things to improve on, and that's why I think that's where we are where we are today because of him. And, um, yeah, he's been immense ever since he's come into the club. And had quite good success. Yeah. How does he, how does he, because you guys are probably, I think they're the only team, maybe Central Coast now, if they both play in the World Cup and stuff, but like the only team that has like a soccer front line, essentially. Um, how does he like go about m- mixing you all, all you guys in? Because obviously prior to this season, there was like everyone was floating around. Lex wasn't, I don't think Lex was there, but now he's here. You've got Jamie yourself before you had Kolokovsky, like all these players, top players. Mm-hmm. When, when he leaves one out, is he like, communicating that or is it how do you guys kind of deal with that stuff or is it just like his way and that's it yeah it's, you pretty much, wanna. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much like that yeah it's pretty much his way his decision at the end of the day like you only do so much as a player you can perform in training and stuff like that mm. and at the end of the day like i think the pedigree of our front three with andy macker and lex it's pretty hard to go yeah, by well, you know yeah, what i mean exactly and like Obviously, I try to push myself to get in front of these players, but it's obviously very difficult. And um, when, that's when it comes back to just me getting an opportunity to play. I'm just happy to be out there. And obviously, every day I try to push them to get yeah. out of their position. But yeah, it's hard. Well, I always like, I love watching you play, by the way. I like, I like your type. I like Scott's type of player too. I do appreciate the failed, <laughs> yeah, the failed I'll, center I'll, I'll back or failed side, midfielder yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> as a fullback. But no, I do, man. I really like watching you play. And I've spoken to some people who, who reckon like, you're one of the best talents in the country and so forth. But if you were like your own coach, where would you say your best position is? Because you're always kind of floating as a 10, left, right, sometimes even as like a sole striker. And I'm like, like, man, like where where for you is your best position, do you think? I'd probably say it was a winger. Winger? Um, it just depends, I guess, in the style of player that I'm in, what team we're playing for. So like for the national team, I recently played as a winger, but I was like, able to come inside. And then with PK, we're so set to a structure that wing's probably my best position. But at yeah. the same time, I play wherever I'm asked. So. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, man. Um Scotty, I want to talk to you just about like the facilities. I don't know why you're laughing at me. Bro. I'm a funny guy. I don't know what's coming up. <laughs> no, oh, there's a lot, mate. There's a lot, but no. I want to talk to you about like we've spoken about like the quality of team on paper because it is ridiculous. Yeah. But can you take me like because I don't think people appreciate what's been brewing behind the Man City Group and Melbourne City and the facilities that you guys have access to or are building, particularly out in Casey now. Yeah, but yeah. 
like you've experienced being in different parts of the league where you've seen it's not always like that. So how yeah. how how good is that as a player? Like what what is it about? Oh, it's it cool. that's so you, you can you can see they got the funding to like to put into it as well, and obviously they care enough to do it. Um, at the moment, it's kind of like a bit up and down because obviously they're building the facility at the moment and COVID kind of delayed everything. Hmm. Um, but you know, you see the images of it, what it's got to look like would be unbelievable. But yeah. Like even where we were before in Bandura, it's quality, state of the art, like, um, you know, had everything you could want there. Whereas like, you know, some other clubs I've played at, it's, it's, it's still good, but it's, it's, you know, when you see the comparisons, it's a big difference. It's, man, it just looks unbelievable. Like yeah. literally has everything there. Like yeah, in the man. one place. They've they got everything. Even like the amount of staff that we have, like you, you got someone for everything. You got someone that's going to teach you how to sprint and run better. You got someone that's going to teach you with your strength. Someone that's going to teach you something else. Like just the the knowledge they've brought in is just obviously for the benefit of the players, man. And yeah. It's just, you know, you can just sit there and nitpick people. Like Really? Yeah. Well, even for your, like as an injury, like a rehab process now, what would that be like? Like it'd be, it'd be so detailed and thorough, I imagine. Like, yeah. They're just, they're, they're straight on the top. Well, like at the moment, like it's been going that well that I'll be coming back three, four weeks before. And that's, you know, down to, down to like looking after myself and then down to them as well, you know, putting the time and effort in and doing the right things and, you know, giving you the right feedback. Mm. Like it's, uh, you know, they, they make sure that you come back in good nick as well when you've been injured here. Like yeah. it, it's not just like you come back in and you have another reset. It's like, nah, like we get you right. Do you find it harder? I always used to say like when I was injured, I always found it harder. Like maybe it was a little bit lazy at times, but I always found it hard. Like you actually had to work harder when you were injured. Oh, injured's been shit, man. Yeah. It's, it's, like it's the you, worst thing. You, you work, work harder. Hard. Cause even when you're at home sitting on the couch, you're still like mentally on like icing or yeah. elevating. Like yeah. you don't switch off. Yeah, you got to like, work harder. You work sometimes longer. Cause it's like, you know, depending on the injury, you might not be able to run. So it's like, oh, I'll throw you on the bike. I'll throw you in the pool, throw you on the assault bike, battle ropes, stuff like that. And it's just like, and they don't care if you're sore. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like uh, when I first did it, I couldn't do much on my legs. So it's like, I'm smashing upper body. And it's yeah. like, well, if your upper body sore, you're a footballer who really cares. Yeah. So it's like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Correct. But it's all, you know, for the benefits of keeping you fit. Like, um, Cause you got to come back at the same pace as what everyone's been training, which I always find man. is really yeah. hard to do. Yeah. It's impossible to. Yeah. And, and they, sure. they sort of drip you into training like a little bit, like, you know, they'll give you a little bit, you do the passing, then you come out and then the next day might be two drills and then you come out. So it's like, they, they sort of feed you in really well. They don't just throw you in the deep end. It's like, you know, you, like I said, they don't want a reset of the injury or something. But. Yeah. Oh, I want to go back to the championship winning season, which was the season before last, because I feel like it's not spoken about enough because you guys had a great season uh, in general, but yeah. I kind of, like most people, and I was one of them, like put a line through you for the final series when I thought like Maka, Curtis, and I think Connor Metcalf like weren't available. And yeah. obviously guys like you yourself, Kolokowski, um, Atkinson, like all yeah. these guys that potentially were were coming in or not necessarily starting them players all the time because Curtis, Jamie, and Connor were like the spine of the team at times. Um, but you guys went and won that, like just took that like by the scruff of the neck. And I was like, holy fuck, man. Like these you young, the young guys are unbelievable. Yeah, I think like, just, the boys had the opportunity to play then. Like, you know, Nate Nate fought back from a really bad hammy injury to get back and play. Like in his first game back was the semifinal and then into the final. Yeah. Um, you know, so again, like that's credit to him coming back in the club. But then, you know, the, the boys that, you know, might not have started as many games because, you know, like say Kolo with Maku in front of him and that, you know, you get the opportunity to shine you can sort of take that little bit of, um, you know, the responsibility on yourself. And the boys all thrive. Everyone thrived on it, man. Like, and, and everyone knew it went, you can't make excuses of these boys missing. We either win it without them or we lose without them. Like, you know, they're not going to be here. So, yeah. and then I think that just showed the depth in our team, like, uh, you know, in the quality that we have. Whereas, you know, if these boys are missing, you've got other boys that can come in and play. Whereas yeah. they might be somewhere else that could be starting. You look at Collar now, he's going to Perth. He'll, yeah. he'll go start at Perth. Whereas, sure. you know, here it's, it's hard to break in front of four Socceroos players. <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> yeah. the hardest front. Yeah. So you've got, I mean, he's a Socceroo and sometimes he's still sitting on the bound like, And then you come on, change the game. Like, why don't you start? But yeah. Um, yeah. Did, from, from like the players point of view, did, did you guys already know that some of those players that weren't starting because of those players or what, well, obviously I think all the players that made impacts in that grand final were playing throughout the season anyway, but did you guys know that they could just like come straight in and do that job and help win the championship? Cause I yeah. think from the outside, no one really gave some of those boys credit. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it was just, man, our, our motto was just like us against everyone. And I think the, well, the main one we had was like anyone, anywhere, anytime, because we kind of just got thrown all over the place because of COVID and like, that was like prime at the moment. Mm. Um, like we had a home semi final, we had to go play it away. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it's just it's tough, a bit, it's, it? it's bullshit. But like, you know, we had to do it and we went, all right, you know what? They're throwing everything against us. You can either you know, bitch and moan or use it. Yeah. And we definitely used it. 
How actually, Tills, how was that for you? Like even last season, there still was games being blocked and missed because of various COVID reasons or weather concerns and stuff. Like, was that frustrating? Like as a player, because it's almost like you don't know if you can trust the calendar at times, particularly last season anyway. Yeah, I think so. Um, like that first year we're talking about, like that first 10 weeks, I think it was, um, of the season, I didn't actually play a minute. Oh, so wow. like coming into the back end of the season where everything was so compact, games getting rescheduled, the team, because it gives time for the team for players to come back, say from injury or players time, more time to recover. So you're not knowing if you're in the starting 11 and stuff like that. Yeah. Then going on to next, last year, sorry, um, we're playing every three, four days. So then it's sort of, you need the whole squad. Yeah. You know I mean, so everyone is getting an opportunity. So like sort of changed in both years and like this year should be week to week basis. So it should be a lot better. Yeah. You'd think so. I think, I think it will be fine this year, but I want to talk about for, for you, obviously Marco, pretty special already having, you know, quite a handful of Socceroos caps and the honor of getting caught up. at so young. Like, I mean, I've, not too many 20 year olds get to play for their country and be in contention to go to a World Cup. So I just want to talk about the first, like the first time you got that call and what that felt like and I guess what that whole experience was like. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy to be honest. Like I got I think I got that phone call when I woke up one morning on day off and Arnie had called me and said, You're gonna come into the camp for the Socceroos and I'm like I hadn't heard anything about it. I just knew I was on the extended list, which was a big shock to me as it was. And then calling me and saying I was going to the squad it was massive like obviously going into it like all these players Matty Ryan like all these guys been around for so long as first you're sort of intimidated mm. by them because of their pedigree and who they are and then as you get to know like the people in, around the camp like actually genuinely good guys you yeah. know what I mean so it made me feel um, more comfortable than what I was and then I got my opportunity to make my debut against Vietnam here in Melbourne Amy Park that's so, right um, I got my chance there could have scored <laughs> <laughs> missed. Should have scored. He had still, all the boys in the stand as well uh, watching him. Still, yeah, still, still wakes came, up at night, does it? Yeah, the boys <laughs> came down and watched me. Um, but yeah, I could have scored that game. And yeah, from there, just I guess I've just been working to try to continue to stay in that squad because once you're in there, you sort of don't want to get lost. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that happens a lot in Australian football in general. So, yeah, agreed. Um, so I hope, yeah, continue. And especially this next window of the World Cup is massive. Coming yeah, up. absolutely, man. I'm pu- absolutely pumped for you. Now, just going, because similar to what you said about like us against everyone kind of vibe, I reckon like a lot of people saying with the Socceroos, like they're not going to qualify or, you know, everyone's saying, oh, this is one of the, the lesser squads we've had in years and so forth. And then literally one of the hardest runs we've ever had to a World Cup we had and overcame. Like for me, when from the outside and you just mentioned like good people and like the camaraderie and stuff. And I remember speaking to, we had Milos Degenek on the podcast a few weeks ago and he was just like, like everyone's like a family and that sort of vibe. Can you like tell us what that was like sort of leading into that period and beyond like just the feeling and elation of getting that qualification? Yeah, it was yeah crazy. It was unbelievable. Just to be, I didn't actually play in that camp, like, but just to be there and you just felt a part of it, and that's I think what pushed us forward to qualify for the World Cup. Like from that first time, that first camp I went into when we played Vietnam, we won at home, at Amy Park, and then we went off to verse Oman, I think it was. That's right. And we lost that game one uh, 0 when we were expected to pretty much win that game, and then we come to the change room and like all hell's loose, aren't huh? like everyone's fuming you know what I mean not happy because at the end of the day we qualify for a world cup so already in the dumps as it is the country's not behind us and at yeah. the end of the day we only had each other so yeah. then going into that camp we just knew that it's like do or die games so um yeah we went in with that mentality and I guess we got through uh well the team got through I was just there and just felt good to be involved and a part of it yeah absolutely well, can you just start for this for me it's like is there anyone when you first went into camp that was just like fuck this guy's unreal like someone that you might not think of. Cause usually when you play with players, you watch them on TV, like you can see their talents, but some people in training are just like different. You're like, fuck, this guy is top quality. Is there anyone that's like caught your eye like that? There's a few, to be honest. Like, you know, like the Aramoy, unbelievable. Yeah. He's is he crazy. really? Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's he's like a get out ball. Like <laughs> as a young player of you. It's hospital pass yeah, to him. <laughs> he just hit it and he'll still deal with it. You know what I mean? Like we were told that from a couple of players. Like really? if, if you like get in, into the game and you don't have anything and you need to find a pass, so give it to him. And it's crazy what he can do with the ball. He looks like sometimes in slow motion, but he's always under control. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Harustic. Unbelievable. Is he? Yeah, because everyone, a lot of people are kind of putting out hopes on him as well because obviously, yeah. I mean, everyone who wears a number 10 shirt or plays that position kind yeah. of cops it, but 
he looks like a like a difference maker like yeah, from set pieces is. or general play. Yeah, he's got a wicked left foot. And, yeah. um, top guy as well. So, yeah, he's unbelievable. Then you got Matty Ryan in goals. He's an absolute cat. <laughs> Like yeah. the way he bounces around in training and some of the saves he pulls off, you're just like, yeah, wow. Did you have you ever play with Maddie in any camps for like no. young soccer? Do so, so you know one of the things that amazed me about him? And this is like when we were 19, was how good his feet are. Yeah. Like left yeah. and right foot, like the, the spin, the height, like he means it as well. Yeah. And I'm like, what the? F-? It's the first time I've ever saw a goalkeeper with like better feet than the outfield players at times, like yeah. when it came to like just ball distribution and stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. He's mental, man. He's yeah. um one of the other and for you, Scotty, because I reckon you would have played against this guy and it's kind of hot on the press at that moment. I kind of feel sorry for him because he's so young, but Grand Coal. Like have you played against him? Oh uh, for think, CCM? Man. No, no, I think I think I actually missed him. Like he's seventeen. He tore yeah. he literally tore up Barcelona in that all star game at times and then I getting caught up to the Socceroos and I'm like, it's a lot of pressure on a young kid. But yeah. How, like, he seems like he's very similar to Awen, but Bill, what A was like, like, just like in a different world, didn't really feel pressure and stuff, didn't really concern him. What was he sort of like in camp? Was Yeah. He was, yeah, unreal. Like, I th- it looks the same, like, the way he goes about him, his business and stuff. He's just so chilled and, like, it feels like that. He just doesn't get nervous or anything like that and just takes the game on as it is. And he showed a bit of quality in training and stuff like that. So, like, all the best to him at the start of the season. He'll be in contention for the squad for sure. Well, no doubt. Scotty will leave studs on him early in the season <laughs> once he gets back. <laughs> you, but Speaking, because obviously, let's talk about the World Cup being in Qatar because, like, we've played in the Middle East many of times with yeah. Australia and the national teams and obviously yourself, uh, Tills, would have as well. But it's a fucking hot place, man. Man, it's... Hot. With Middle East, like it's hard yeah. to play, bro. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. It's like stinking heat. Yeah, no, no, it's it's ridiculous there. So, well, I'm pretty sure. Like, you you played the yeah, we actually the went qualifying to game stadium. there. We trained in the stadium that our group games are going to be played at when oh, we went really? for the, when we qualif- went for the qualifiers. Are, are they air conditioned and stuff like yeah. this? Does it make like a difference? Pro- proper aircon. Like, it feels like you know when you're at home and you leave the aircon on, it's freezing. Oh, but it's it like, like that. that on the ground. Yeah, it's actual proper cold. Roof yeah. closed and stuff. Yeah. Everything. So it's like, it's pretty cool what they've done with the stadiums and even the where we play the qualifiers, the heat, you can't get in there. Yeah. You know what okay. I mean? Like roofs closed, the air con's huge. It's yeah. just blaring in there. It's massive, but Money's cool. no issue for them. Though, <laughs> yeah. <though. laughs> Money's no issue. <laughs> Fork that out. Oh, before we move back onto A-League, just probably the last, last question on this, um, Tills, is just like, what sort of the advice Arnie gives you sort of when you leave the last game against New Zealand and obviously now this sort of gap between picking that 26-man squad or whatever for the World Cup, what's did he sort of leave any words with you or has he just kind of left it at that? And just pretty much said the general stuff of go back, work hard and you know, obviously you got to be the fittest you've ever been because this is a massive opportunity for you. I said it to the group, not just to me, and um, you take it back to your club and you know what you're playing for now for these next four or five weeks, I think it is. Um, Mm. So there's going to be, I'm sure the A-League for the next four or five weeks is going to be almost chaos. Yeah, ever, it's ever. going to be high quality. When are, yeah. you, when are you back? What Have you got a I think date? Round two. Round oh, two round two. Be, oh, yeah, so yeah. You're not so I, was, I was meant to miss the whole start of the season Yeah, um, until the break, but yeah, it looks, looks looking to be round two. So Scotty boy, he's back. Because yeah, well, I want to, nice. do you know what's going to be interesting as well? Because it's almost like, and I can't figure out whether it's going to be good to be last or first, but going into that four-week break, I think it's like November 11 to like December 11. There's no games yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's a good month. So it's almost like a split season in a way. I mean, what's that? Have you guys thought about that yet? Has that been spoken about or not really? Not really, man. You just go hard. Like yeah. no matter what, we're going to win every game. Like team wants to go undefeated. Mm. Um, you know, you want to go into that break. I think even as players, you want to go into that break sitting on top. Because yeah. then it's like, it'll be all right. We're doing well. Let's go. I think if you went in a shit position, it's, it's going to be a long yeah. month in between. Like you can almost reset though. Yeah, but that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah. if I'm coming last, then I'd want a four week break. Because then, like, yeah, fucking things can change. It's like a little But then again, yeah. you, I mean, you don't want to be last. So it's, no, yeah, it's the glass half full. Even if you're winning, then, then you want to keep playing because you're on a roll. Well, but that's the thing. Yeah. Then it breaks momentum. Yeah. yeah that's but, the only thing. Uh, I think, like, the way the way our club's set up, man, like, that won't be an issue. Like, yeah. it'll be like, it'll be like another mini preseason in between. You'll get some time off and then uh, get ready to roll. And then it'll be like, I think our first game back, Sydney away. So it's like a tough one. It'll be straight like, up. you know, we're jumping straight into it again. Yeah. I wanted to, talk about the Melbourne derbies because you've been on both sides of the fence yeah. and obviously Tills you've experienced it now can for, for those like me you don't play in it or for those that what like what is is that sort of the pinnacle of the sort of atmosphere in games that, that you guys would experience um, across the A-League anyway that is yeah I, I think uh, like take out finals aside yeah like uh, yeah the derbies the the derby with victory yeah is the, the big one yeah um, you yeah, know it's got the history behind it as well yeah um, 
and you know you just you, you want to be the the main team yeah like you, you want to be the main team in the country we were always city was always like looked at like you know the the younger one coming through on that mm. and then now you know the last couple of years like winning titles Correct. winning premieres making finals winning the derbies pretty good as well it's yeah. uh you know you, you shook the cage a bit and victory had their uh you know like couple off seasons it's good to see them looking good again. It's just good for football in general. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. I think for, for, both, for the A-League, Melbourne City and Melbourne Victory yeah, have to do you, well. You want to see it and just even the way the fans get into each other, like it's yeah. it's what you want, man. Like it, you look every league in the world, man. They've got the derbies. Like Correct. That's, that's what yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, it's the best, man. I love it. It's a, it's like genuinely like affects people's livelihood yeah. if, if you win or lose on those games, it's particularly because oh, of like it's, the rivalry you, in the city. You're, wait, you're waiting to the next game. Like that's <laughs> it. Like you got bragging rights. Yeah. You, you take it over them, so... Absolutely. Now, when you come into the league so young, because you both done this, like I still can't believe Scott. Flea. I, can't, I can't believe we played ten years, bro. Oh, <laughs> bro, you look, you look <laughs> like feel, you. Oh, you look like the same as you did when you came here. You got like a skincare routine or nah, something? Just a bit better looking, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him, bro. We're gonna drop that Scotty skincare routine and like well-being routine. It'll be long in the uh. Man, in I, the I, chat, I, but... I hated it at the start, looking so young, but then I like, now I'm enjoying it because when you see boys like starting getting older and grey hairs, and now I'm going, I'm, I'm buzzing with this, man. Like, a couple of greys. Huh? Oh, I, was I, I was calling you out on greys today. Don't Do you, you worry about that. Grey, surely at 21. A a a copper deficient or whatever it is, man. <laughs> yeah, there's no no one ha- no hairdressers in camper. Oh, no. Nah. There was, oh, I think we could have got access, but didn't. Know. Yeah. He's stressing, man. He's stressing for a haircut. When you, um, yeah, well, when you came into like the pro league so young, like what was sort of the initial feelings and reaction? Because for you, Tills, I think your, your debut was in the Champions League, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, Scotty came into like Derby. arguably one of the best changing rooms as well in the league, like victory at the time. And victory, just, Ange is the coach. Like it was scary good team on yeah, paper. Unbelievable setup. And like that was, I was fresh out of AIS. I was only at the club two weeks and I got my first start. Like um, I think my first game that I got to watch was, I think the Big Blue was my first game. I was in the stands watching it and I was like first time experiencing A-League other than when I was like a kid watching yeah. Perth Glory play back home. Yeah. I was like, man, this is unbelievable. And then uh, the fullback, uh, Diogo Ferreira, uh, was playing. He got suspended in that game. And then um, I was like, oh, shit, the Derby's, Derby's next week at um, Marvel. Oh. And my old man texts me and he's just like, you know, we just like heard your name on TV. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, commentators are saying, oh, you know, you might get the call up. Whoa. And I was in my head, I'm going, nah, no chance, man. Like, it's, Is this the start of the season as well? Like, nah, I came in well, the Jan- come, January window. I was going to say, I thought yeah, you came yeah. halfway through the year. I, I came in the January window and then they were like, yeah, you know, you might get a start. And then straight away after the game, like Ange pulled me, Kevin Musk was the assistant, pulled me. They're like, you know, you, you're playing next week. <laughs> and he was just like, I, I don't care. He's like, I don't care if he's young, whatever. Throw him in the deep end, you just sink or swim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure, man. Like I've never been so scared going into a game in my life. <laughs> Archie Thompson did not help me one bit going did, into it. What did he say, man? I, I was preparing for the game. I was like, I had a good warm up. I'm good to go. And he came over to me and he just goes, "Big game, forty thousand people. Don't fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, Archie, cheers, man. Like no, appreciate the confidence. Yeah, he's usually the biggest lad ever. Well, and he then, probably would have been doing that to amuse himself, though. Oh, yeah, he would, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't have been doing yeah, that. Yeah, because like he went banter. on, he went on and had a killer game. But yeah, he was fuck. just like doing like because he was the, he was the banter of the change room, like, yeah. and he's he's always been like that. But <laughs> and then listening my my first two touches, I'm like, oh, you know, just yeah. calm. I'll get it on the ball. Adrian Lay was playing next to me, fired the first one at my throat. <laughs> I lost it. I think David Williams took it off me and went down. And the next one, he's like, my bad. Like, I'll, I'll give you a better pass next. Fired the next one at my throat again. Yeah. I was like, man, this, you, you're just, stitching me yeah, up here. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Held the young kid out. Do you yeah. remember your debut? Yeah, it was in that dead rubber against, uh, it was in the Champions League back at home in Sydney. I don't know if it was against, I forgot now. Oh, yeah, it was a dead He's gone game. to do so much at 21. Oh, no, he's got man. his debut already. Debut means nothing Far to out, now. man. You're getting no, too big for the little guys, <laughs> no, man. No chance. <laughs> no chance. Um, but yeah, we played, I think I got maybe 20 minutes in that game. Um, it was the back end of the season, I think. And then that was it. I played, made my debut then and I didn't see the field again you for you the sc- first team. You scored on your league debut, huh? Yeah, that, I think that was the following year. For Sydney? Yeah, for Sydney. Yeah, cause, so what was the reason you left Sydney to come City? Was it opportunity and stuff or what, what was the driver for that? Yeah, oh, so I was at Sydney for... Yeah, I can't go on. <laughs> <Did he say? laughs> <Cha-ching, what? laughs> I think he coughed money. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, like I was at the club for five years, so they built me from a little kid. Um, and then I was breaking into the first team. I was training there full time for, well, for two years. Sydney was like peak Sydney too, no? Yeah. 
Yeah, like Sydney, is, were pretty like this yeah. is before your sort of yeah. the city period. Um, they were elite, man. Yeah, like I was even lucky enough to train a couple of times when the Champions League when I was sixteen at Sydney, and like then was Broski, um, Carney, yeah. Colosco, like that team, and they right. were um, Arnie was the coach back then, and then. I continued and Steve got the job once Arnie left and um, I went to the first team for the first time that year. I don't, I don't remember the year, but I didn't play much. Yeah. Uh, I didn't play at all, sorry, but I was just training a little bit. Then the year after that, I got more of an opportunity. I was training full-time with the first team um, and then I did get the same year my opportunity just to play, but um, not much. And I think it was for me just sort of an outside Obviously, Melbourne City come and approach me, and um, I just thought it was some fresh air and uh, just something new and go yeah. test myself a little bit because I knew it would be, I could play a different environment. Well, it was a smart move, man. Look what's happened since. But killing um, yeah, killing it, actually, exactly. But did you play with Ninkovic? Yes. Man, do you know, isn't it funny? There's like a myth around the A League because a lot of people talk about the imports, like obviously Del Piero and all these guys, but are like internally in the A League, the ones two that always come up like with genuine respect is Diego Castro and Ninkovic as like two of the best imports that have come in obviously longevity. They didn't come in massive names, mm. but they like were some of the best players we ever had. How, was he as good as what everyone says he is? Yeah, unbelievable. Really? Why like, though? Like what was he so good at? Just It's the same. Like you play board his knee, he's guaranteed to take a good first touch and you always trust him. He's one of those players you could always trust. And when he was obviously a bit younger when I was um, back at Sydney and his quality in training was – yeah. Joke like he was next level. He was always a level above everyone. Like Fuck. he played for some pretty sure Serbia and stuff like that. He was um, top player, man. But yeah, he was unbelievable. Who Scotty? Who do you in your position? Because you kind of cop the brunt of like some of the best players in the league playing running at you all the time, and you kind of like this is the thing with the right and left back position. I know people give it a lot of stick as like failed centre back or failed midfielder, but like you literally you play against people like Marco every week. Do you know what I mean? That's fun. Yeah, and you, oh, training as well, right? Yeah. You're training against Lex. Yeah, dude, Marco, try, try and get this boo. guy running at you one v one, man. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Where so can you can you give me a bit of insight on like your mindset coming into games because you've always been like a pretty you're always kind of like you're not I don't know now if you, you're always kind of a quiet guy but I always thought like when it came to game day you could tell like you had a switch that like you switched on and yeah, you just kind of just got to know your own man but like it's one of those things is I think it's fullbacks like modern game is very different now like you're attacking you're defending but then you always seem to be coming up against like generally the marquee of a team like mm. you know you, you play on Ninkovic like I've played on him multiple times and like yeah. man this guy's that hard to play against you played on Castro like other ones that come into the league like they're just they're all ballers wingers are all ballers and, and, and clubs always look for a good winger that's going to entertain and be good Correct. and then you're the fullback that's going to try and stop him man like that's I'm glad this guy's on our team so I don't want to play against him. I'd have him at the knee, but... Yeah, I bet he would too. He's got it in him. Now he's like, now you're like a bit of a lairising fullback, man, getting forward, scoring goals, overtaking people. I'm like... Yeah. That's what, that's always, what I've always loved to do though. Like yeah. I'm, I'm fit. Like I love to run, just get up and down. And then, you know, with, with confidence comes all that other stuff. So... Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, outside of the like, home games for you guys, where's, the, um, where's your favourite ground to play at? Like in Australia, where's like the one you enjoy the most? I love going back home to Sydney now. So what's so, that? Is that Allianz? They still call it yeah, that? Allianz is, they, this year will be yeah. at Allianz, but it was at Jubilee and oh, Leichhardt Ju Oval. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, I just generally just averse Sydney FC. That was like one of my favourite games, but not the stadium. Not the stadium. Yeah, no. just, yeah, just, just yeah, the club. hatred for the old club. <laughs> he goes, he goes <laughs> back and he has fucking, what, 100 people rock up at Tilio show yeah, to watch oh, the game. Really? Like, what part of Sydney were you from? Inner West. Oh, okay, so right. I'm Inner West Sydney, but yeah, so... Yeah, I love this in the UFC just for the fact of they were my old club. Go home. No, no, like hatred. Yeah, just exciting game just for you. exciting to see old, old teammates, stuff like that. So it's cool. Yeah. What about you, Scotty? You're a veteran now. You probably played yeah, I've played, every for, I've played for half the league, man. In this country. Half of them have been my home team. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, probably like, a, all right, you're going outside Melbourne because obviously it's a good plan. Yeah, well, you're going to say you're gonna, Amy Park's a good ground, so uh, you know Ad that. Adelaide, man. Adelaide I, I, I always, Coopers? Yeah. yeah. Like, I love my time at Adelaide when I was there. Yeah. Had an unbelievable time, great year. Good city, Um and then obviously yeah, going back, cop a shit ton of stuff. Oh man, man. They're, like, they're, they're, they were man, they're vicious. They were they were vicious when I left. Like yeah. uh, and then I still remember once I left, we played them in the cup final there in Adelaide. I think we got smacked like four nil or four one or something. And <laughs> man, I just stood on the field and the whole the whole stadium was chanting, like, are you watching as they lifted the title? Oh, and I was like, oh, man, that's just like, cheeky. that's just putting wood on the fire. That, like. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, I still got a good relationship with like some of the fans and that there. Um, 
you know, like uh, I still keep in contact with them. Um, you know, Redwig Steve, who's there. Yeah. Still see him. Uh, even in the semi final last year, because I, I was warming up on the side, I was just coming back from injury for it and uh, I was copping it and we warmed up in front of their bench, like their fans oh, at Amy Park. Beautiful. And I was getting a blast, I was getting a blasting, man, like <laughs> up, absolute blasting. And obviously, when they score, at they least you know you're good there. then because if you weren't, you wouldn't be copping yeah. on. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I, I sort of look at it as like that one's like the. The more it, it hurt them, the more you're going to get sort yeah, of thing. Correct. Like if they didn't care, they'd be like, see you later. I'll like back Absolutely. off, but yeah. With that, we mentioned, so the team on paper, obviously you guys, I think arguably the best in the league. I think it's going to be a really competitive league this season, by the way, as well, because victory's yeah, bolstered. 100%. Western are back with the out. Sydney sort of never yeah. drop off. Although Brisbane had a bit of a shaky preseason, like I think with the impact of Austin and, I mean, naturally, Perth and Wellington are always tough games with travel and so forth. Yeah. So and the fact they actually get to play at home now as well. Yeah, like well, correct, right? So, I mean, going yeah. to Wellington was like a, a. I think we spoke. I spoke to Jura ages ago. It was like they knew they were going to win games, like back in yeah, back when they had that squad. Because it's, it's a mission to go there. Like yeah. it's you know international flight for a change, like yeah. for something different and. You know, did you any, play there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was it? Yeah, well, so tell me about that. What was it? Yeah, played everywhere. More clubs than Jack Nichols. Just go, brother. <laughs> Where haven't you played? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you, 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 where have you played? CCM, uh, Victory, Central Coast, and then went to Wellington, Adelaide, City. So, right, it's yeah, been a bit of a few, yeah. Mate, Resume. Yeah, why are you? You should have more wrinkles, bro. Like Ex- experience, man. Experience. experience. That's what well, I say, but yeah, just go because I want to talk about like who you guys find it sometimes the hardest to match up to like not necessarily hardest but who do you find that gives you guys the best games now, obviously naturally derbies there's always that that fire but yeah. like i'm just talking stylistically and for me man i think adelaide's always been a tough game for us like it's really yeah and especially going away to adelaide it's it's a tough place to go the, the crowd's on top of you they pull a good crowd they're yeah. they're an aggressive crowd as well like uh oh man i still remember that was my second game when i first started playing and i'd never copped abuse before i was like a kid growing up like playing <laughs> Man, some of the shit that I heard there, like, it was just next level. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Fuck. wow, this is like you know, professional football. You you, you got to you just got to cop it, man. Like, yeah. if you if it gets under your skin, they'll keep riding with it. And they'll smash if it. If you just give them, like, a wave and a smile back and, you know, yeah. especially if you win, and you just you know, give a little stick back. But fans love that stuff, man. Like, yeah. a bit of back and forth. Like, you In see Australia, with, they do, definitely. You yeah. see it with Jammo on our team. He gives it to people all the time. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Before, I want to ask about Jammo, <laughs> but Tills, for you, who do you sort of see, like, is this similar to Scotty or do you have another sort of team that you find like formation, tactics, like it's always hard to break down? It's, it's ever since I moved to City. I think Adelaide, we always, it's just a team. Really? It's just like, I don't know if it's a curse. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there you no, go. Other than that, nah, it's no, not you, really. Yeah, comfortable. I like that answer. <laughs> um, speaking of Jammo, now I love Jammo because I, I don't know what it was, man. I'm the nice guy off the field, but when I went on the field, I was just started talking shit and like... <laughs> I don't know. Too. I remember. I, like, yeah, I, remember. I, yeah, I was shocker, bro. I don't know what it was. I still do that. Man, in the MPL, I caught myself like doing some weird shit. I ran, <laughs> some guy took a shot. Was like, good, good shot, but I went straight to the keeper. And I ran past him. like, is that your good foot? And I ran off. Like, what the fuck am I doing that for? Like, <laughs> just fucking focus on the game. Like stupid yeah, shit yeah. like that. But Jammo is the king of it. Yeah. And people that don't know Jammo, like they genuinely despise him because of like, he's so competitive and like, he's a guy you obviously want on your team, but hate to play against. And then you meet him. He's like an absolute lad. But yeah. Um, what's it like playing with him? Cause obviously he's the captain. You see, he's like getting into like those verbal competitions every game as well. Not only just with the ball. Yeah. How does that sort of affect the team? Is it fun to be playing with him? Like when he's like that? He just looks like the drive man. He's, he's, he's like the, the PK sort of on the field. Like he, he wants to drive everyone, make everyone accountable for everything. I think he just loves that as well himself, man. And he just loves getting under people's skin because you know, you get under their skin and you're on top of them on the ball as well. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's different for me. I'm playing like alongside him. A bit different for him playing in front of him. And he's yeah. You know, yeah. If, if, like if he track his runner, the fence, yeah. Because I can tell you, we'd be letting you know if you went tracking back and shit. Yeah. Sure. Knowing him, <laughs> yeah. you can hear it, the whole and stadium. And knowing Tills, Tills might be just delaying, hoping that the ball's won so he's yeah, in space. Yeah. <laughs> like every good left winger. <laughs> no, he can. He sure hear him. Yeah. The whole stadium could hear him, but <laughs> nah. He's, he's good. Like, that's why he's raised the captain's armband. Like, he's a leader for our team. And, like, I think once, like, I've lost him a couple of games with injury or something like that, suspension maybe, he just lose that verbal mm. uh, on the field. Like, without him, our team, it's not really many people that will talk the way he does. Yeah. And you you feel the whole, up. like, it, you, it's a big hole missing when he's not yeah. playing. Really? Yeah. yeah it's yeah, massive. Okay. And, pe- like, as, as you said before, like, people can hate him from the outside, but he's unbelievable for having your team. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to play with him. Yeah. Like, fuck, I'd start chirping up too, man. Like, yeah. what'd you say? To say? Yeah. <laughs> but he's good. Like, yeah. I love playing in front of him. Like, sometimes it can get a bit much when he's screaming at you, but yeah. overall, like, he helps you. Like, he's absolutely, like, he's like a coach. 
It would be um, it would be remiss of us to not talk about my good friend Jay McLaren as well. I think he was to- second top goal scorer in the A League. Is he? Yeah, he's yeah, not far behind. He's not Bech. far behind Bech, yeah, yeah, but I think Bech far. is still in front, right? Um, but just give me like a bit of because Jamie's like for me, even though I've known him since I was twelve years old, and when I still talking about football, it was like so serious, like yeah. like he's just like he's so competitive. He's just like one way, you know, like yeah. it's just the way he is. Like he can still have a joke and a laugh, but he's just always been like that. What's it like, sort of playing with him, training with him behind doors, and obviously knowing that you're going to get goals from him, like giving having that confidence coming into games. What it is, man, it's just the confidence. Like he, you know, you just got to put the ball in the box, and and he's going to be there to pop up and finish it, like. He, d- he doesn't take many chances to put a finish away. He's he's sharp on it when he does. Like, man, some of the goals I've seen him score, a little flick of the head and that, I'm like, man, you just don't really see many strikers doing this. Nah. Like, he's, um, and he's just hungry for goals. Like, he, f- he frustrates me because I was never good at not playing well and scoring a goal. Yeah. And he's like, he can, this is why he's so dangerous because he might not have the best game, but he, if you win 1-0, it's probably yeah. coming from him. Yeah, he'll show up. Yeah, he'll show yeah, up. He just, and if he plays well, he can still score. So yeah. it's like you'd never know. Like as a defender, yeah. you can never switch off. Nah, so that's, that's the most dangerous thing about him, man. Like you give him one chance, he can score it. Like he could do nothing all game, pops up with a winner. Like, and that, that's the beauty of a striker. Like if you have someone like that on your team, you just got to keep feeding them. Like it's going to come. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we're going to go to a bit of a fun section to round this out and I'm going to emphasize quick fire here because sometimes we've done this and people think too long. So instinctively, we're going to go five five questions each and you guys obviously answer them with, with what you think, right? It's pretty pretty straightforward stuff. We do this a, a few times on the podcast, but let's go. Me? Yeah, we'll go you Scott. Want to, you want to think about your question? <laughs> no, it's seniority first, yeah, yeah. right? Let's go. All right. Hardest individual opponent? Oh man. Yeah, actually, you know, that's... <laughs> You played against a lot, but just who jumps? Are we, to are we going? Are we going A League? Or are we going worldwide? Well, up to you. Memphis Depay. Fuck yeah! Naturally. Absolute, absolute ripped me a new one, man. My first ever international. <laughs> really? This guy's doing slaps over my head and everything. I was looking up at the sky. But is he is athletically strong as what people kind of say and how he looks. He's, he's, he's just a, a beast because you're a beast, right? So if you're playing someone against a beast, then he, man, he was a he was a yeah. he, was, <laughs> he, he was a bully, man. This guy. Really? Yeah. Well, what about you, Tills? Who's the hardest for you? Hardest individual opponent? Like a fullback um, or a defender you would have gone up against a league or international. Hey. What's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Chucherel. Oh, Chucherel, the Chelsea defender. Yeah. Lost him at Olympics. Oh, really? Yeah, can't think against Spain. Fuck, now he's on sixty million dollar deal as a fullback to Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like. Yeah, I didn't know who he was. Was he so playing I, for I Brighton like, then? I thought it was like Puyol. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he does. He got Puyol vibes. Yeah. Major Puyol vibes. Like, I don't know who that was, and then he signed a Brighton like just after the Olympics, and then now he's at Chelsea, and I support oh. Chelsea. I'm like, well, wow. wow. Okay, now this one's this one's a bit a bit different. You've kind of said against, so we'll go here. Best player you've played with uh, or against, but we'll go. Maybe with, because you both said against it. Go with. Oh, again, tough one, but I, I think Matthew Delpierre at victory. Really? Man, that guy. He's unsung heroes. He's one of those like Castro and he just didn't play here long enough to get the <sighs> reputation. But. I, I played with some unbelievable, even like you're talking about like players on the pedigree of Ninkovic and that, like Guy Finkler. Like, yeah, man, underrated that guy, as fuck, man. Guy's that good. But yeah. I think as a defender, because this guy helped me a lot, taught me a lot. Matthew Delpierre, man, like he's, you know, won the Bundesliga with Stuttgart. Like yeah. he's, he's a king going around. Some Rolls Royce, man. I don't, th- I don't think actually I've seen a player get past him the whole time he was in the league. Yeah, that's what he, everyone like, says. He's actually just that good. It's like Van like, Dyke, bro, back yeah. then. But he was like 36 or 35. He was just smoking cigars in the back, just like cruising. This guy was on cruise control and he was yeah. still that good. Like it just, it just shows the pedigree of player he was. Like, what about you, Tills? Obviously, I'd have, got to, I'd have to say Ninkovic. Ninkovic. Or Florian Berenga <clears throat> in our team. Yeah, he, he is, is he a bit unsung of a hero as well? Gone, because man, he's, he's been, good. how long's he been here for? He's been here for a little while now, no? It's been five years now. Yeah, I, was, I feel like, like it, I don't know. I came. Maybe internally he gets a credit. I don't know if externally he gets enough credit for like his um, quality in the team because obviously you've got the front. The front yeah. sort of three. He's like, his last, like, last like two years, he's really stepped it up, man. He's like, he's, he, he's a baller. Like, uh, you see him every day in training, so like yeah, you appreciate it. Well, well, this might this might answer that question. I mean, you can't say yourselves here, but best trainer at City. I, I, th- I think I'm gonna say Jamo. Really, in, just in terms of like professionalism, and man. Stuff. He's he's never given less than 110 percent every session. Right, like he's just demanding, grueling, whining sometimes. <laughs> I can <laughs> nah, imagine being but all like that. that guy just doesn't quit. Yeah, so, yeah. I say Jamo. 
J Mac. Yeah, yeah, see, I could see J Mac like really buzzing about at training and like he's shooting always, for yeah. hours and shit. No, like, so happy. To, like, just looks like he's so happy to be there all the yeah. time. You know what I mean? Like, just everything extras, all these kind of things. He's a first person. Wow, oh, yeah. um, there you go. Good. All right, now this is. Oh, this one should be a bit of an easy one. Favorite holiday destination? Scotty loves a holiday. Yeah, been traveling Europe. Oh for man, fun. I, was, I was money man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was going to come and wearing some heavy drips, man. I'm like, I know what Scotty's like, but. <laughs> Oh man, I just got back from Europe in the off season. So I said Paris. Paris. Paris was a joke. Like yeah. that was. Never I'd, been Paris. Had to go. I had the best time there. What best. about you, Tills? I'll just say the odd Maldives. I've just seen photos of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> nah, you'll be there. Say where we've we been. No, no, no. We'll oh, just yeah, wait. wait fa- <laughs> I thought you were going to say <laughs> Kuji Pav. Like <laughs> <laughs> one way is to find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, this one's a bit of a serious one. This is a theme that we're building on the podcast because I think I always tie these three to, I mean, anyone in life that wants to be successful, I think these three traits are important. But from an athlete, I just want to see which one of these three sort of you associate with, with your successes. So, and, and tell me why. So if you could choose one out of drive, resilience or ambition, that's helped you to get to where you are. Which one sort of hits home the most? Man, I'm, I'm stuck between drive and resilience. Like, because I've had some shit times in football. Yeah. Um, but probably just drive, man. Just continuing to work, continuing to grind. It's, it's, it's the only way to correct any wrongs or anything. Mm. You know, if you, forg- give if, you give, if you give up, that's it. Like, you know, you're caving in. Yeah. Beauty. What about you? The resilience. For resilience. Sure. Ever since I was a kid, it's always getting knocked back because I'm, I'm a small person, you know what I mean? Yeah, like but, uh, stature. Uh, does, has that ever been like a, a marker over you, like coming when through? When I was younger, yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, like not making teams because generally my height. Um, so, yeah, I had to get over that hurdle when I was young. So um, having to do that and coming through the Sydney FC Academy like that, I was more than fortunate enough to be a part of that academy, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I've had some ups and downs that everyone only sees like the highs, not yeah. really sees the lows. And I think to have a resilience is massive. So absolutely. Well, boys, man, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Tills, you obviously good luck for the start of the season and obviously the World Cup hopes, man. Hope to see you in Qatar. And Scotty, look forward to seeing you score some left foot bangers early on, mate, when you're back. And hopefully, man, yeah. Yeah, it'll be be exciting, man. I mean, it's as I said, it's gonna be one of the I think one of the biggest A-Leagues from a competitive standpoint, like so many teams are well spread this year. So uh, looking forward to see how the City boys go. And um, yeah, thank you again for coming on, boys. Appreciate it, man. Legends. Yeah.